Hey guys, hope you're doing well. I recently did a review of the Logitech G203 slash G102 Lightning Sync Gaming Mouse. If that sounds like a video you're interested in, it will be linked down in the description below or up on screen somewhere. In that video, I showed a snippet of the Logitech G Hub software. I had way more info about the software that I could fit into that one review. So I've decided to release this video with a more in-depth overview of the features you can get in the G Hub and what customization options you get with the G203 in particular. So without further ado, so here is the G Hub. Unfortunately, because I only have that one Logitech device, there are some features of this software I can't really demonstrate. When you first open up the software, here you can see my G203 um, Lightning Scene Gaming Mouse. If this were a wireless device, say the G305, the battery life would be displayed down the bottom here. Up the top here, you have your games profile. Uh, the software recognizes the games you have installed on your PC and allows you to customize your device settings for each game individually. You can also have multiple profiles per game that you can um, switch between. As you can see, I don't have any games installed, so it comes up with just the default desktop profile. If you go back to the home screen and you click on this little icon here, you can create an account which allows you to save all your profile settings, your RGB and button assignments, uh, that kind of thing to the cloud. And this can be really handy if you are switching computers but want to keep all your settings. Clicking on the mouse itself, it brings up the RGB customization. Uh, on this mouse, there is this band on the side and the logo in the middle. Uh, which is made up of three individual RGB LEDs packed closely together. In some Logitech mice, you can customize different parts of the mouse to have different RGB if the RGB LEDs are a bit more spread out. So in this tab here, we have some presets. Uh, this is just the one color that you can assign an effect to. Next up is the freestyle tab. Here you can assign three different colors to the three different LEDs inside this mouse which you can do by clicking on these circles here and either manually select, selecting the color to whatever you want or you can enter the color code here. And lastly here we have the animations tab where you can choose from a few presets or if you want to be really fancy, you can create your own. It's a bit complicated and time consuming, but basically these are your frames. They are one second each. You can add frames by clicking the plus button if you look at the little icon for the animations here, it shows essentially what it would look like on your mouse. So here you see this wave. Where it is higher, it is brighter, and as it gets slower, it will get dimmer. And then you would arrange these on your little timeline here in whatever order you want. And if you click on them, uh, you can pick the colors that you want for them in the same way you would in the Freestyle tab. And by mixing and matching these colors and these frames, you can create your own custom animation. Moving on to the next tab, you have the button assignments. The first option here are the standard commands, uh, your Windows commands, your old F4, your old escape, things for switching between apps, Control C, Control V for cut and paste, Alt left and Alt right, that kind of thing. Moving on, you can uh, assign keys to the buttons which can be very useful for gaming and multi-button video editing shortcuts. And here you can assign actions to the buttons. You can see that the software uh, recognizes that I use Discord and gives me the default options to mute or deafen myself. In the next tab, you can assign macros. Macros are kind of like very specific custom commands you can assign to the buttons. Um, I don't really have a use for these, but if you wanted to make one, um, you would create a name for it here. You can ass then assign your action, uh, which gives you the options of keystrokes, text and emojis, launch applications, system and delay. So if you want to, you can create some very custom macros with the software, but I'm just a casual PC user, so I don't really have a need for them. Lastly, you can assign system control settings, such as your primary and secondary clicks, your copy and paste, undo, volume up, volume down, your lighting cycles, and you can cycle through your G-Hub profiles. And lastly, on the side here, you have the DPI. Um, this device allows you to have up to five different DPI settings that you can cycle through using the default middle DPI button. 
uh, as a casual PC user, I don't really have a use for this, so I might just swap out the DPI button for something else. And that is all the G-Hub features I can show you with just this one device. If I had other Logitech items from the G-Series, I could show you the sync feature that allows you to have the same RGB settings for all of your devices, but unfortunately can't do that in the moment. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that this video was helpful in showing you some of the G-Hub features as well as giving you a look into the options you can get with the G203. If you have any suggestions for other videos I can do, feel free to comment them down below. And if you like the content I make, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any more videos from me. Bye!